All right. Let's see if this works. Does it work? Yes, it does. Maybe. All right. If you're watching or if you follow me from wherever the heck you follow me from, give me a thumbs up and make sure that I'm not going crazy. All right. Thank you, Rabbit. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So tonight, while I'm messing around, let's go ahead and get into the fun. This is a game I found screwing around online, actually. And if I fade away, I'm just looking at something. Don't worry about me. <laughs> All right. This is a game I found on Steam. I think I paid $4.99 for it. It's not a bad game at all. So, there we go. All right, let me find you. You're here somewhere. I know you're here. There you are. There we go. Got you going. Got you going. See my mouse? Yes, you do. I'm going to move you right here. Let's get started. This game is called TIS 100, which is basically an old school version of, of the stuff I learned back in coding. With all good things coding, you got to start out with a self-diagnostic. All right. And for those that are wondering what that debug says, That's what your red says. Basically saying, hey, this is messed up. Got this at the swap meet. Fellow one hundred four hundred fifty dollars for it, but I talked him down to 200 Good deal. No idea who makes this thing. Never heard of this TIS series, and the architecture doesn't look like anything I've seen before. Ask the guys down at the... You could just interpret it. I think it was a computer shop, but no joy. There you go. You were asking what was in the red rabbit. That's it. It's basically debug messages and various things. All right. The code that it has here to start with is move up down. I'm going to show you what happens if you leave it as is. You see the stall? Yeah, that's not going to work. And if I run it fast, it's stalled too. So with this game, you do have to remember your visual basic. All right. That first one works. It, it, it works. It's good. So we're going to leave that alone. Now I do have to add something. See that? cursor there i have to add something to it this one i have to add something to it that code is good there this one is good can't do anything to the block next to it. Three one, that code is good as well. It's just incomplete. It's a matter of putting in simple move codes. And you don't tell it moved, you'll see that red op code move. All you do is the MOV. And while this is running, this is based on Visual Basic. It goes as such. 
I'm telling it it's moving up for information, passes it down, move it up, pass it down, goes to the output. Move right for the information and it tells it to go up and left. It's all going to go to output X, output A. You see these two columns here? Now watch. Now I'm going to do this fast. Want to see that again? Here we go. I'm just running it now. Runs it in three cycles. And there you are. Let's go on to an amplifier. On this program, we're going to create a new program. And we're going to work on a signal amplifier. Now, let's see what the debug message is on this one. Continues to baffle, chat it with Bernie and IBM, and he says it sounds something like they would have come up with in the USSR, but why is the manual in English? That's a good question. <laughs> All right. I'm only going to have to use four blocks. In fact, there's 12 blocks here. And when you see the manual, it'll say 1-1, one 1-2, dash one, one dash 1-3, one 1-4, one or 1x4, 2x1, 2x2, 2x3, 2x4. Most of these systems are a 12 block which was how Visual Basic worked. All right. To get the signal amplifier, I'm going to have to move it up. I'm going to add access. And then move access to the right. And woo! Look what we got here. That's going to do that. And let's do something else, too. So we've got the telling it to move right. By the way, you can copy and paste when you screw up something. There you go. All right. The one next to it. Listen to tell it move to the left and move down. That's it. I only need this block. And for the coup de gras, because there's your finish line, output A. Oh, and would you look at that? This is the stuff that, uh, this is a game made by Zachtronics, by the way. It says, all right, here's how many cycles. Here's how many notes we needed. The statistics. There we go. Ah, visual basic. That is a good question. All right, let me get this converter going and I will tell you what visual basic is. Uh, long, long history behind it. Uh, everything is made by the military. A lot of this stuff was uh, done by, by DARPA. A lot of your computer languages are done by DARPA because, uh, back in the day they said, Hey, we need, you know, to do this project or this project visual Basic was a computer programming language. In fact, let me look that up. It's been a while since I remember what basic was. Uh, basic stands for, basic is an acronym. It stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. So basically, they tried to make it that if you were a newbie, and the military gave you a computer that said, all right, go to work on this computer for this item. 
they tried to make such a generalized code that uh, <coughs> you have to uh, learn this in about a couple of couple of weeks, basically. And you were working on some advanced military computers, but Basic was just lines. That was it. Now, Visual Basic led to Microsoft Basic. Yes, Microsoft had its own version of Basic. It's the foundation of the Microsoft company, that Microsoft company that we know today by Bill Gates. Bill Gates started with Commodore Basic, Atari Microsoft Basic. This was during the home computer craze. Uh, in fact, Rabbit, do you remember uh, the uh, the Commodore computer? You know, that old school Commodore computer that your mom and dad might have bought from Radio Shack, plugged it into the TV, said, hey, we've got a computer. But you had to type in that code to get into the computer, like this, run this command, this starts this game. That's how that worked. Visual Basic was <coughs> one of those that... Uh, It's an integrated development environment. Uh, basically, what Visual Basic does is uh, it added graphical user interface, or what we know as the GUI. Basic is the, all right, best way to put it. Uh, basic is the command prompts. Yeah. It's kind of like that stuff, the old text adventure games. Basic is the written commands, the stuff that we know as the command window, the command prompt, the uh, terminal is basic. Visual basic is, is you have a graphical interface and you tell it, all right, you type it in, type it in, create this exe file and say, all right, do this command, and it shows it to you visually. That's Visual Basic. This game is dealing with regular Basic, the, the old beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code. It did start out at Dartmouth College, ended up going to the military, and it basically it was uh, meant to be an everyman system because the only people that knew coding at the time were scientists and mathematicians and it did get applied to military use like i said because you had to go in learn this stuff in two weeks and said hey i've got to i've got to know this language i've got to do this so how does that apply to this game uh zachtronics as i said is the guys who did this game what they're doing is uh and they're saying, all right, let's take this old visual basic or no, this old basic program and try to create a form of visual basic that everyone can understand. All right. This is called a differential converter. It's going to deal with numbers and nothing but numbers. Now, as I said, you're going to need to use to make it efficient, use as many, as much code as you can within as small a space as you can. All right, so this one, I'm going to start in the second block. Uh, this first column, I'm going to tell it to move right, access what we're doing, take what we've got from input B, and then move everything down because we're going to have two outputs output p output n next one we're going to move up and left taking everything from input b moving it back to the left next block I'm taking everything I'm getting from from one two. We're gonna bring it down. Then I'm going to move up. 
get what I've received from the top column. We're going to move that right. Neg means, all right, stop. Gathering so much information. Move access down to output P. The last one, whatever leftover information, I'm going to move it left. My program left. Whatever information I've got left is going to output N. And again, this is what Bill Gates started with. This is what Steve Jobs started with. And then you got Ted Allen and Steve Wozniak. This was the stuff they started out with in colleges. Microsoft was one of the first ones, along with Commodore, that brought the basic craze. Of course, from there you are. From basic, you could go to Microsoft Basic. From Microsoft Basic, we went to DOS. Jobs went to uh, what they called Mac or the Macintosh system. And the reason we mention all of this stuff is the electronics is saying, all right, this is what the project we're going to start with. We're going to go back to the roots of the computer. And this TIS system is, again, a play on an old school system. They're not sure what, what exactly is in the system. And what you're doing is deciphering what's needed. Uh, there might be a little bit of COBOL in here, but this is mainly basic. So let's do this signal com comparator. I can speak English. I know I can. <laughs> All right. Use the very first block. I'm getting the input. I'm moving it down to this block. But so what's going to be in this block? I'm going to move. Everything up. I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to add access. We're going to move it down to this column. Three, one. Up. Oh, yeah. Got to add some access to it. Add one, which means we're going to add. going to add an integer every time up oh, now we're going to move it to the right now we're getting ready for the interesting stuff <laughs> move left to gather the information move back right to dump information That's for the first loop that we're going to do. Because all the information is not going out in just output G. Everything that's moved down, we're going to take away. Yep. That is the mega string of code. All right. Minus two. Now we're going to give that access. NOP is no operating parameter for those that wonder. It means ignore this, ignore this. We're just going to dump information until this last command. Here's some more mega string of code, by the way. You notice it's the same as the left to it. Yes. There's a reason for it. That you're duplicating this command. You see those three columns that say out G, out E, out L. You've got to put it 
in three separate places. And in fact, there's that. And finally, the last bit of code. Move one down. Because that's going to be the last place we're going to dump everything. And now we ask the essential question. Will it blend? Oh, i got to read the debug message, by the way, before I do that. So, 1979, found a black a block of static memory, but it's in a proprietary format I never saw before. Can't make heads or tails of it. Oh, brother, there's just too many different kinds of machines coming out now. Like tinkering with them as much as the next guy, but when every Tom, Dick, and Mary implements their own memory address scheme, it's all I say the bottom's going to drop out of the microcomputer market soon, mark my words. 1979, how wrong they were. It dropped for a bit, but... <clears throat> and it came back with Microsoft Basic. You see the numbers on the top? Minus one, minus two, question, minus... That's what the uh, comparator does. And... Look at the strings of code running. To which someone that actually knows coding as well as I do would be like, do we need to add all those uh, no operating parameter spaces? Yes. Yes, you do. And look. All right. I got one more for you. And then we're going to see this experiment through. All right. And for those that are wondering my exact history, I did I did six years in the Army. I was a medic by trade. I did experiment with the computers. A lot of the Army systems, you're still running basic. You're still running uh, stuff like Access. You're running various, various systems because... Uh, a lot of it is we're not going for modern. We're going for solid. Excuse me. Now, here's a multiplexer, as they call it. It's basically for boosting signal. We're only going to have one output. This will be right there at 3.3. Three. So we're going to tell it. Move up into the right when I put it in the right column, which would be here. All right. There we Remember the start codes? Here they come. Oh, the string of code. Oh. Yes. You see that item that says undefined label? When you play this, do not worry about it. I'm going to tell you those labels are undefined. There's a purpose for this stuff. I'm going to show it to you in a moment, actually. All right. Oh, I need you. All right. See that red line disappear? 
see that red line disappear. And that is it for one three. Now you see that big block of code I have in the left? That's all I need for the last one. All right, let's go to two three. And the one below it where the output's going. All right, here's another debug message, by the way. I might have an idea of where this TIS-100 machine came from. Zero described the architecture to Fred at Motorola. He says, it sounds like it was designed for signal processing. I got my brain going. Possible government project. Hey, Jay. Something the CIA cooked up to come through Soviet radio signals. Hush, hush, top secret. Maybe I could be in possession of a classified device, something for spooks. I might have to sit on this one for a while. So, yes, in this game, they're adding little Easter eggs. All right. The fun part is, will it blend? So, oh, yeah. That's definitely the one thing that people don't realize is that a lot of these quote-unquote edutainment games can be boring. Other times, they can't. You know, you can just find little Easter eggs like that debug message. Since Jay is here, he missed a lot of my story, but he can catch it on on the back turn and on my YouTube channel, too. All right. Let me do one last one since Jay is here. A generator. All right. I'm going to go in and create program. Yes, this is some nerd stuff, but you know what? I am one. Now, there we go. All right, we're going to tell it to access the file on the input. Then we're going to move it to the right. <coughs> and, and we're going to move that down. We're not done with this row yet. And there is that one. All right, we're going to go up right. And we begin. Look at this. All this stuff we have to type in to tell it, we're just pushing it to the bottom. Now to define right. I've wondered that myself too. <laughs> I may do a test. Like they, they give you a, like a, a, a sandbox. I might try that just to see what would happen. Uh, don't worry. You haven't missed much, Jay. Uh, this is my first stream, so don't worry about it. You're good. Also, it's it's about 6 in the morning for you, isn't it? All right. Excuse me. Bit of a cough. All right. Here's today's debug message in this last one. <laughs> All right. 35 or 1994 35 yeah the new girlfriend is encouraging me to get rid of the microcomputers i've accumulated over the years not a bad idea 
Most of them are just taking up space and aren't doing me or her any good. Going to wait on this one, though. Never found out what its whole deal was, and if it turns out to be something I wasn't supposed to have, I think I could get in trouble. Created a little space in the workbench and hooked it up. Still works. Beautiful. And yes, it is a beauty, this one. I haven't figured out what this machine is yet. All right. Let's see why it doesn't blend. Let me see. There we go. There's an error message. So let me look at it again. It's a good thing I write notes down in a separate notepad whenever I do this. That's what <laughs> that that's a good question. That is a good question. Hopefully he picks the right answer and says it's the girlfriend. But you don't know. Yeah, I figured I would. <laughs> And, yes, you guys heard the red marks going, rrr, rrr, rrr. yeah, I used to hear that all the time when I started doing, not just the game, but just in general. When I do the basic and the C++ stuff, it, it would drive me nuts. Because, I mean, you hear that noise, you're half awake. You haven't had enough coffee in your system. All right. Let me see. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go for the simple solution. I am one of those nerds that writes this down on a separate notepad because I can't remember anything. My memory stuff. All right, rabbit. Yeah, my memory gets shot. What? Seven in the morning? How is everything, Jay? All right. There we go. That should add to it. Let me get you back here. All right. <laughs> All right, look at this. All right, we're doing everything down. But I've also got something else. Start. Add one. Move ACC down. There we go. Yep. Look, folks, I'm not the most interesting person, but I'll at least try to entertain you while I'm doing this. So. 
something else that you might not know, you can actually still access this stuff in your windows. This, uh, I think you have to look for the command window on windows on your, your Mac, which I have. Yes, he did. I think I got one too. <laughs> which one did you get? By the way, Jay, did you, uh, get the sword game or did you get another one? I know I got the sword one. And he is a sly rabbit. Yep, I got that one too. I've tried it. It, it does. Uh, knowing that mechanics are, are incredible on that too. I mean, when you parry, you can actually parry a sword block. A sword strike, you can actually block a, a throw if you time it just right. That's my kind of game. All right, let's look at the debug. <laughs> no, sh okay. 1994, but the date is corrupted as all hell. No, she won't understand. Of course she doesn't. Why would you expect her to? Just keep working. I feel like I'm learning about the people behind this and their design decisions. The thoughts that went into figuring out things, how things should work. Those people feel very close to me now. I think there might be a little bit of obsession on this, on this person's part to figure out how or why these systems are doing what they're doing. Doesn't it? Anyhow, there we are. All right. <laughs> so back. I'm going to do you. I'm going to do you one more. This is a few more than I thought, but they're not taking me as long as I thought either. Signal edge detector. All right. It's telling you, read a value from N, that's your N. Compare value to previous value, Why one if changed by 10 or more. Not true, write zero always. The first output is always zero. That's basically the rules it's telling you. <laughs> it's cut and dry. And I'm going to tell you the path it's going to take. One, two, three, four, out. So let's begin. That's the first question that you're answering. You're going to read a value from in, but you're, always, you're also going to answer the fifth question. Is that the first value is always zero. After the first value, everything else just does what it needs to. All right. Two, two. Could do a bit of a swap action. Move everything down. It's saying, all right, this label's undefined. Again, don't worry. We get to tell it what to do. Oh, nice. And you didn't burn them either. That's the good part. Yeah, funny thing to happen, Jay, is uh, Rabbit didn't have such good luck with dinner earlier. And a burning dinner wasn't healthy. 
And I got a dry throat. Also not healthy. All right. There we go. Yeah, he he did ca- catch the pot on fire, but that's all right. As long as he didn't catch rabbit on fire. How to define what cancel means? All right. All right, Rabbit, while you were gone, the girlfriend left him in the last uh, last code. So let's see what we come up with. Uh, Nineteen ninety four still. Days and days and days, cycles and cycles, and just one after another. I'm sick and tired of people who don't respect me. Time to pack it up. (laughs) He did choose the wrong answer. He did. And let's return to the segment list. The more we debug this stuff, the more story that this game gives you. Let's see what this, and that's what you're looking for earlier, Rabbit. I got a simple sandbox, a stack memory, and an image console. I may experiment in that in that sandbox later. All right. The rules of the interrupt handler. You're going to read input one through input four. Write the input number when the value goes from zero to one. Two interrupts will never change if it's in the same input cycle. Which means... That no matter what, if I put in two interrupt commands, it's not going to listen to me. And they do put story into it, yeah. All right, it's going to give you the undefined label. Don't worry about when it does it whenever you play this reason why I say that is because you don't always define the label at the start. Those are the interrupts that it's talking about, the JROs. All right, column two. And when I was uh, experimenting with this with Rabbit the first time, we we just went through the straight code, just going through the nuts and bolts of the game. And we decided if I actually was crazy enough to do this on a stream like we're doing now, that uh, I would go through the debug messages and find out if there was a story. Kind of pleasantly surprised there is a story. All right, zero seven two two down and oops, I almost repeated myself. 
which the code would have told me if I did. Very violently, I might add. All right. And yeah, that... Uh, in the Zachtronics games, I found they do give you a little bit of a story in between. Uh, when I play Shenzhen IO, if I get to it, it's there's an interesting story in there. All right. And there's that one. Yeah, it's going to be. Oh, it kind of does. <laughs> Although the good part is, I don't think it's attached to anything, you know. Attached to anything that'll send a signal, but stranger things have happened with this, with these games. And if I had my druthers, I would say it was probably a CIA machine, like he said. All right. At 2 1, you see all that code that I've got at the top here? Yeah. That's all I'm going to have a one line, a three line. And column three will end up being a four line. Yeah, watch watch this be a nuclear device and we're all doomed. It was nice knowing you game world. That's all I need. All right. Let's see the next debug message. My sister was over for the holidays. All right. 90. <laughs> Before New Year's Day, 1994. My sister was over for the holidays. I think to check on me, make sure I haven't gone off the deep end. I know I caused some worry. My Her kid saw me working here and suggested that I could serve the web for T1, TIS 100 specs. Saving kids are on about internet, online, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's a racket. I don't care about the information superhighway, and I never will. Kind of archaic in his ways, isn't he? <laughs> and where to work gain... Yeah. All right. I'm not going to do the next code. However, let's see what the deep bug message is here. Hearing a noise from the garage, but it turns out that it was nothing. So now that I have plenty of free time, I might as well get back to this. Keep my skills sharp while I look for a new job. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. This will be the 10th program that I write. And we're going to end on this note. So what we've established is he's lost his relationship. He's lost his job. His family thinks he's a nutter, <laughs> and rightfully so.
probably looking into the mindset of a person who obsessed over this old system and probably spent so much time in his old system he forgot everything about everything which is a sad way to go sad i mean That is a very sad existence, sadly. Yep. Hey, you wonder. Keep that in mind for the next game I do, by the way. That thought because... Yeah, there is going to be uh, that Shenzhen I.O. There. Keep that thought in mind. All right. And in fact, Shenzhen is considered the sequel to this one. All right. All right, let's see where I messed up because watch. That is why I have notepad. I know what I forgot. <coughs> Wrong integer on the JRO code. But there we are. And I actually occupied almost an hour with this. All right. That covers the first 10 segments. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, <coughs> 11. That seems a fair drop off. I'm probably going to finish this up later. For all I know, I might twist rabbit into talking to me while I'm doing this. Who knows? Uh, this is definitely not what I expected. <laughs> Whenever I saw the debug messages, I almost think this might be a, pre a setup for Shenzhen. As that has been considered the spiritual sequel of uh, TIS 100. It's made by the same guys. Uh, but yeah, TIS-100, this is, again, a form of basic machine. Uh, Shenzhen deals with microchips input-output. And they've definitely... Oh, yeah. I, I do owe you a Mega Buster after I program it. <laughs> yeah, that is the agreement. But, yeah, uh, I... You know, if you're not watching this right now, if you're going to watch this on YouTube, I definitely would interest you into, uh, want you to check out my, uh, my Twitter. I've got a website I write for, uh, various other websites. I'm also into comics too, but, uh, if you actually find this game pretty interesting, it's CIS 100. Uh, you can get it in the steam a uh, store for four ninety nine, not a bad price. Uh, uh, they have a Zachtronics pack. Uh, get into that too. That is definitely worth the money. Uh, I don't have a Genius sign off yet, but uh, or uh, you know, not gonna bite from Kim. Kim's one of my friends. I don't want to bite her stuff. And I'm talking about Kim Justice. 
Uh, just going to sign off with a 